Well, hello, boys and girls. Uh, good to have you join again. So today we're going to talk about a person and a story in the Bible that's about this person. And I want you to see if you can guess who it is from the following clues. So I'm going to act out, uh, but not just me, uh, my assistant is going to act out uh, the following clues. There, there she is creeping into shot. So two clues. The first one is this. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> okay, that's clue number one. You might have some ideas, but let's see if this helps and you can actually zone in on the answer with clue number two. Okay, they are the two clues. Thank you to my brilliant assistant. Um, so did you figure out who it is? There was obviously this the idea of strength and great strength in the first clue. And the second, the you saw uh, my hair get snipped, get cut. So of course, we're thinking about and looking at Samson. Now, Samson was a judge. He was, this was in the time before there were kings. He was one, the last of the judges of Israel. He was meant to be a deliverer and God did use him to deliver Israel. But Israel at the time was in terrible sin. They did that which was evil in the sight of God. And so God gave them over to their enemies. And at this point, the Philistines... And so the Philistines, these enemies of God and enemies of God's people, were ruling over Israel. And all of this was because of the people's evil and sin. They didn't do that which God called them to do. They sinned against him. In this time and in this situation, Samson is born. An angel proclaims that he will be born and he will begin to deliver Israel from the Philistines, these their enemies. And if you know of the story and you've ever heard of him, the story, you may well think, well, Samson surely is a great example and one to follow. And it is true that God really uses him. The Spirit of God comes on him and he is incredibly strong, this supernatural strength from God, such that on one particular occasion against the Philistines, he has reason to be in conflict with them and he ends up they try and buy they bind him and he ends up the spirit of god comes on him and he has this incredible strength he breaks open the ropes and he looks and finds just to hand the jawbone of a donkey and with this he kills a thousand men he was incredibly strong when the spirit of god came on him and god used him against this, the, the enemies of God and God's people, the Philistines. But is Samson a good example? Well, in every way but one, he's actually a terrible example. He is an utterly selfish man. It, it reflects the time in Israel when everyone did that which was right in their own eyes, i.e. they did and lived according to what they thought and wanted. They didn't do what was right. They didn't do what God said. They were in utter sin. And this was a terrible time. And Samson is the last of the judges. As each one we go through in the book of Judges, each one becomes worse and worse and worse and reflects the state of the nation. Now in this context, God is gracious and does deliver Israel but Samson himself is, is, as I say, selfish. He's disobedient to his parents. He goes out of his way to break the special uh, calling he was given by God, to be different and separate and devoted to God. And he isn't. He does evil and wrong and is selfish. 
So even though God uses him, he's not a good example. He's an example of selfishness. But in what way is he a good example? In what way do, can we be blessed by looking at Samson? Well, much as he is used to save and, and wins wonderful victories over the enemy, ultimately the enemy do capture him. And the snipping of the hair it reflects the part of the, the account where you know that he dis goes after women from the enemy, from the Philistines, which God said that he, that his people were not to do. And he does that. He falls in love with them, commits sin. And the last one tricks him. And he shares the fact that his hair was long. And this was part of his being special to God. And, and thus used in a special way by God. And as it's cut off, it's not that the hair had magic power, but it is his complete and utter rejection of the calling on his life. And he, the strength leaves him. And so he, they, the enemies get him. They make him blind so that, that he can't see. And he is taken away and he becomes a, like a clown. They laugh at him. They mock him. This one who was their great enemy. At this point, and it's the end of Samson's life, we see that though he did much wrong before, God humbled him. And now when he's in this terrible state, there is an occasion where all, and in fact, many, many people, thousands of the enemy gather together to feast and to mock uh, this leader of Israel, this deliverer of Israel. And they say that their God, who wasn't a real God, he was an idol, the, the, the idol Dagon. They praise Dagon and say that Dagon has given Samson, their, their adversary, into their hands. And in that, they bring him in. And there's loads of people, there's uh, two stories and thousands of people there. And Samson is led by just a small child because he's blind, humiliated. And this is the selfish life that he has led. But God has humbled him. And in that moment, he, his hands resting on the great pillars holding up the building. He's led there and he puts his hands on and he calls out to God. And in this, he says that, asks God and says, please give me your strength one last time. And, and in that, he avenges himself of the Philistines. Yes. And he brings about a victory for God because it, the house falls down and God's enemies die. And lastly, Samson is buried by his family. That's why in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, though in every which way he is an example of selfishness. He ultimately has faith in God. And that's the most important things we need in life, to have faith in God. I ask you now, boys and girls, is your faith in God? Because only then can you be one of his people. Only then will you be one of his people and saved. Do you trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I call you to do that now. Because Samson is an example in that he was a man ultimately of faith, that he did trust God, even though he had done much wrong before. And I call you, each one, boys and girls, to trust in God, to trust in Jesus and be saved. So now we're going to have uh, a song. Who is this man? Our music group are going to lead us in that. We're then going to have the text read in 1 Timothy. And we're going to have another song Again, led by our music group, Here is Love.